Yuletide greetings to all viewers and to audience. Um, obviously a passing thespian has left their costumes here. Uh, no doubt wardrobes will clean up. But it's time to get on with the festivities and the show. And uh, as you can see by the black spots on the floor, we have some people to stand behind them. So will you please welcome the volunteers. <laughs> Yes, some have done time, I'll see that, yes. <laughs> and some should be doing time. Anyway, welcome, Gary Wilmot, nice to meet you. Pamela Armstrong, mm, mm, mm. Yes, <laughs> nice, isn't it? And uh, Desmond, Desmond. Dear fellow. How nice of you to look down on me. <laughs> it's always a pleasure. Hello, sweetheart. Hello. It's nice, isn't it? Oh, you fill me with passion, woman, I tell you. Oh, I might even go to live in Port Maddock. <laughs> Oh, hello. Good evening. How, good. How are you? Just even now? <laughs> oh, get off. I can't take all that accent. Listen, listen. Now, now listen, sweetheart. Hello, darling. Listen, just because you're on the east end of the line, you've got a posh voice, haven't you? I have got a posh voice. Oh, on there's got a posh voice, yes, yes. <laughs> I bet Dirty Den don't know about that. And we've got... Uh, I'm sorry, sir, I do watch television quite a bit. I know, you know, hello, hello, and, and the Heidi hi and... Pamela's chatulant, but I never saw yours. Have you got a telly show? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. You haven't? No. Well, get off. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is for telly people, see? Get off. Who are you? Alan Bennett. Alan Bennett! <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for a living? I work for Pinty Bowers on an assembly line. On an assembly line, that's right, because this gentleman is the only honest one of this bunch. You see, <laughs> That's not an insult. The people at home, the people at, could you put that somewhere else? <laughs> you see, the people at home, they think, they think, well, all of you are stooges. Now, I know you're not, and you, you're going to shoot with that, Gary. And I, <laughs> and, and I know you're not. But what we thought was, if we, if we sort of got you, then the people at home would trust you. Now, just stand there. Ladies and gentlemen, we're very proud on this program. Very proud indeed. The reason we're so proud is because the BBC this year have awarded this show the celebration of the party popper. <laughs> Each year, the BBC issue, as part of the festivities, one party popper, and it's ours this year. <laughs> and it is to a member of the audience, who, let's face it, the viewing public of the people that matter, that we give this. <laughs> and you have to pop it. <laughs> it's all right. Not yet. <laughs> what you do, if you popped it now, everyone would think it really was a fiddle. You face that way, you look at the tree, <laughs> now the band will start and you mix yourselves up, don't stand on the spots, I'll tell you why in a minute, and you shuffle yourselves, okay? It's called the celebrity shuffle and the music starts now. <laughs> yes. That's the idea. Now, at any moment of time, when you feel like it, because you can't see them, you pull the party popper. I won't touch you, give you any clues. They will stop and head for the nearest spot. He's fired it! Nearest to you! Nearest to you! Come along, Pamela, you'll have to come down this end. There we go. Now, Pamela, you hold this like this. You can look round now. You stop them in any order. Now, what you have just decided, what you personally have just decided is the order programmes will be going out next year on BBC television. <laughs> <laughs> now, what you do, you, you hold it with two hands like that and you let the rest drop. Drop it, drop it. And stick your head through there. Now, yes, you stick... I know you're only little, but stick your head through there, cos that's like me, you see. Now, look at that, eh? And, <laughs> no, keep your head up, smile at the camera. Yes. You, you see this on the telly. Now, there we are. Now, you're obviously charming, Prince, and um, you've got the slipper here. You are Prince Charming. Aha! Uh -huh. You see, you thought it might be bad, didn't you? No, not not on your No. <laughs> Desmond can't wait to see what he is. Now, Desmond, <laughs> what you do is you just hold it up high. Yes. And you drop it. Yes. And let's right, see. Now. Yeah, yeah. And look through the hole. <laughs> is it good? <laughs> oh, it's, it's very good. Yes, yes. You're a principal boy, dear boy. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh yes. You might have preferred this. You've got a fairly camp lamp. So that would make you Aladdin, all right? Aladdin. Gordon. What have you got? 
have we got here? Listen very carefully. Oh. <laughs> I will say this only words. <laughs> you made a booby. Um, <laughs> as a matter of fact, you made a couple. And uh, <laughs> what have they got lined up for you? Let's have a look. I don't know. Reveal your all. Oh, that's nice. You are covered up completely. Oh. Can't see. Oh, you've got Nora Batty socks on. There we are. <laughs> you are red riding hood, you see. You're a bit taller than there, aren't you? Heidi yes. high, Heidi low. <laughs> OK. All right. This is it. Reveal all. No, don't drop that. Reveal... Oh, this. Yes, right. <laughs> you are Robin Hood. OK. Thank you very I much. I tell you, I, these have... I, they've improved enormously. I mean, in, <laughs> in terms of volume. Anyway. Very good. Very good. Gary. Gary, would you like to do yours? Yeah, all right. <laughs> Did the real Robin Hood have a pair of them right there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Go on, then. <laughs> oh! It's <laughs> <laughs> the first time I've seen Robinson Crusoe looking more like Man Friday. <laughs> That's a that suits you. You could go to a few discos I know dressed like that. Now, can you just step back a bit, just about half a pace, and I'll tell you what, Desmond's away at the end there. Now, listen, you see, the, before the show started, you see, long before, they were shown that they had to stand behind these, these little dots, OK? Now, I'm going to remove the dots, equally the same, like this, you see. There's one dot gone, and two dots have gone, and three dots have gone, like this. You see? And uh, how are you? Very well, thank you. You're very well. Yes. You are sure good, then? Yes, you OK, know. yes, yes. <laughs> this, this, that way, yes. I won't move yours, because there's, there's a reason why. Right? Now, we've got all the black spots off the floor, except this one. Because I put underneath this one, just let me show you, I put underneath this one a red cross. All right? Now, you couldn't have known where the people were going to stand, OK? You couldn't have known that at all. And yet they shuffle themselves into any order. They are not stooges. Debbie, can you just do me a favour? This young man has helped us enormously. He took some gags at the beginning of the show. Give him a nice round of applause as he goes off. Off you go. Nice round of applause for our volunteer. Thank you. Yay! Yay! Listen. Now, what I want you to do, just, just let them go down on the floor. That's it. Just let them go down on the floor. And would you form up on each side here? There's some... I'm sure that knowing the BBC, there'll be some little marks, and you're all familiar with those. Gather round. We'll have uh, three here and three here. And what we've got here, as we thespians know, having played many parts in our time, is we've got a set of drawers, all right? And in, in here, as you can see, it's obviously a kit from an old, uh, well, probably not so old, uh, principal boy. Yeah, well, this is the Robin Hood outfit, and this is the sort of costume that he would be wearing. And uh, we just put all that in there and fold that down. Ro uh, that was Robin Hood next to Red Riding Hood. OK, we have that there. And um, this one has got different costumes in. Good. Now, once we've got that mounted up there, can I just show you this? Over here, we've got um, some little mice. You see? That's nice. Mice. That's mice. And we've got this. This is Cinderella's frock. OK, Cinderella's frock. And uh, next to her, because that's what she always wished for, is Prince Charming. There's the slipper. And there's the Prince Charming outfit. OK, that goes in there. We've also got another one over here. And um, we take this one and we put this one here as well. Now, what we're doing here is putting together a travelling trunk so that... Uh, now, look at that. See that? <laughs> Now that, <laughs> I shall say nothing, Gary, but this, <laughs> this is what the lad found. You were, you were dressed in something like this. This is, um, this is uh, Robinson Crusoe outfit. Over here, of course, is the, uh, ha ha, very interesting, a riding costume. <laughs> and here we have the lamp, and any principal girl would have had this sort of outfit, you see, and when they had this sort of outfit like that, the reason they would have had that, because they never knew what part they were going to get. Can you give me a hand, Desmond, and just lift this up over here for me? Thank you very much. Up and over the top, like that, and put it on. And it would all fit together. They were wonderful, these old trunks. And then the lady, I think I can do that, because despite all the rumours, I'm incredibly strong. Go on, work in here, you've got to be. Now, that would go in there. Oh, and the lamp, of course, you would need... I'll need the lamp. And we just put that in there, like that. That gets fastened. Can you just pass the straps up for me, around, and just 
and that would fasten down. And no need to fasten it, we'll just have it like that. Because when it's on the road, that's what it would look like. You see, wouldn't it? Any of those parts, a person could then get dressed immediately and perform whatever the pantomime demanded of them. Gentlemen from the audience stopped them anywhere at all. The Red Cross picked out Desmond. Finest pair of legs I've ever seen on you, Desmond. <laughs> and you were, of course, Aladdin. I was. You was. And that's why when I rub this, we don't get the genie of the lamp, we get Debbie McGee. And she is Aladdin. I'm very delighted to have my next guest on this show, and I'll tell you why. His father was known as the Dean of American Magicians with a fabulous show. Along came a son who took that tradition onward and stamped his own personality on it so strongly that it is now definitely his own style and his own show. Tonight, with an excerpt from that show, will you please welcome the great Harry Blackstone. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. By way of explanation, may I tell you that when I was a youngster of about seven or eight years of age, I saw my father do a moment of magic that was most memorable. In fact, it was a holiday season. And I remember it because, well, when you see what you're about to see, you will also think it's something you'll remember the longest day you live. Watch, please. bring it to you. Perhaps you'd like to look at it. Take it in your own hand and examine it. Don't spill it. Look at it very carefully. And now that you've examined it most carefully, may I show you and you a miracle. and hand it to the lady across from you. What's that? Well, she says, that's impossible. Of course it's impossible, that's why we do it. Now just let go if you would. <laughs> would you like to look at it as well? <laughs> oh. oh, it scared her out of a year's growth. get a chance to see it either. I'll tell you what, if I let you look at it, promise just to look, don't touch, all right, then you may see it as well.
beautiful Christmas tree and all the beautiful presents under the Christmas tree. And what's your name? Paul. Paul? I remember that. How old are you? Ten. Ten. Well, you know, I wasn't ten. I was eleven, actually, when I started in magic. And if I got one of these for Christmas, I would have been delirious. Do you know what that is? A magic set. A magic set. And when you get something like this for Christmas, well, you rip it apart. And when I got this, well, I'll show you. I took it apart like this and I started to do my magic tricks. And I got one of these. Do you know what this is? A Rubik's Cube on s um, a dice on string. You lovely modern child. <laughs> <laughs> Wood with measles, isn't it? That's what it is. <laughs> and what it does is it slides down the string, see? And it goes back like that way, see, because you just rock it from side to side. But if you say stop when it's part way down the string, it stops, okay? You say stop. Stop. No, no, you've got to say stop before it's at the bottom. <laughs> Come on, Paul. Anyway, we'll try it again. Are you ready? Stop. No, no, no. <laughs> you've got to be much faster than that. Are you ready? Right, are you ready? Go. Stop. I haven't started. <laughs> You've got to play fair with my magic set. You really have. Right. We'll try it again. Are you ready? I'll say go. Go. Stop. And it does. It's good, isn't it? And you say go. Go. And it does. And that was called a stop and go block. Do you know what this is? Uh, an envelope. Yeah, I mean, what was in it? You see, inside here, there is a large playing card. And this playing card, there's nothing else in there. Some people think there is, you see. Yeah. And it's got four diamonds on, because yeah. the four of diamonds. On the other side, there isn't a back. On the other side, there's a three of diamonds. Now, on the other side, what's on the other side? Four diamonds. No, 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 six. <laughs> and you know what's on the other side? Two diamonds. No, no, no. Ace. <laughs> Good in. There's the four back again. And then you put it back in there quick before anybody had a look. <laughs> <laughs> Good in. In every magic set that ever was, in every magic set, there was always one of these. Have you ever seen one of those? No. No, pretty old. But they still make them. This is the famous ball and vase trick. Do you know why? No. Well, because it's a vase and it's got a ball inside it. See? Nothing in the lid, just a vase and a ball. All right? Now, I, hold your hand out. Hold your hand out. Good, good, good. Right. Now, examine the ball. It's a round ball. Nothing in here at all. All right? And what you do is you just put this back together like that. All right? Well, I put that back together. And give me that. Good lad. So, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll get hold of it in my left hand. That's my left hand. That's my right hand. Okay? And you keep tight hold of, that, of, the, of my wrist. That. Now, with your, this hand, reach out and grab some ruffle dust. <coughs> yeah, it's a good year for ruffle. And what you do is you sprinkle it on there. And it has, watch, disappeared. <laughs> good, isn't it? Yeah. And if you remember where to open this, oh, that one, yes? Inside there, the ball is back again. And the lid, thank you. That's good. Cute little trick, that. A cute little trick. But in every magic set, I've got to tell you, in every magic set, there was always something that you really wanted. Always something bigger and better and more wonderful in the rest. It's this. Look, Look at that. Do you know what that is? It looks like a cup. A cup? Yeah. Right, you must drink a lot of tea. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a vase, a vase, or a vase, but this is a big one. This is what the, you always wanted. And inside this, you used to put this. Now, look at this. There we go. Let's get this out. Just fluff it out and put it in there like that. Oh, it's exciting, this. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you. Right. You know what it is? Cotton wool. Pardon? Cotton wool. No, it's not cotton wool. Who told you it was cotton wool? It's coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee, but it's coffee, yeah. And what you do is you put the tube over the top like that, and once you got the tube over the top, you would just go flick, flick, and immediately the white coffee had gone, and in its place was beans. <laughs> now, some people at home don't think it is coffee beans, so do me a favour, all right? What I want you to do is just sniff that and make sure it's real coffee and say, yes, Paul. Come on. Yes, Paul. Good lad. But did I ever tell you about my brother? No. Oh, my brother was a terror. My brother used to say, come and spoil all my tricks. My brother used to come and say, I know that's done. His name was Trevor. And, and he said, all right, coffee beans. But if you were a real magician, and if that was a real magic set, you'd be able to take anything and cover it up and make real coffee. So I said, what do you mean? He said, well, put a lid on it and snap your fingers. And I did. And when I took the lid off, the coffee beans had gone. And when I took this out of here, it was possible to pour out real 
hot coffee. Like that. There you go. <laughs> it is hot. <laughs> and then I said to my brother, say, I am a magician. He said, yes, but I know how this one's done. He was always trying to spoil them. He said, I know how this one's done. That's, that's not a real ball. You can't take the ball out. Have you seen that trick? Yeah. No. Uh, he had, but he was wrong. This one was a real ball. And you could take it out. And he was wrong again. And with this one, he took this. Before I could stop him, he took the envelope like that, and he opened it up, and he reached inside, and he showed everybody how the trick worked. He says, it's got a four if you hold it like that, and a six if you hold it like that. And I couldn't stop him. See? See? If you hold it like that, you've got a six. If you hold it like that, you've got a four. I said, oh, you've spoiled that. He said, it's the same on the other side as well. If you have it like that, he says, you can see you've got a three. And if you hold it like that, you can see you've got a two. I nearly cried. And I thought, well, I'll show him. And I turned it over, and there really was a six on the other side. And there really was a three on this side. And that's good. Eh? What I'd like to know is where did the eight come from? Amazing. It was, yes, it surprised him anyway. And then, and then this one, he got mad about this one. He said, this is obvious. He says, look, he says, you can just make it stop and go down all anywhere you like. like that, see? And he kicked it off me and then he gave it back to me. And he said, if you were a real magician, you could make it go up again. So I did. <laughs> and it went up like that. Good, eh? By now I was feeling really good. Really, I was winning. And then he said, Mmm! And he went back to the coffee vase. And he says, I know where the white stuff went. Do you remember the white stuff? What was it? White coffee. White coffee. <laughs> Love a believer. <laughs> he says, it's in there. He says, that's where it is. It's in there. And I says, no, it isn't. He says, yes, it is. So I picked it up. He says, There's, the white stuff's in there. I said, but it's not white coffee. Whee! It's flour. <laughs> What you just saw there was a small piece of electronic trickery. But what you're about to see is not electronic at all. It's not even electric at all. If you're a collector of magic, the thing that you are about to see at home is very exciting indeed. About 137 years ago, there was a very famous French magician. And to just to say very famous isn't enough. He was world famous. The magician of his day was jean Eugène Robert Houdin, a French inventor, clockmaker, illusionist, an extraordinary man with a great life story. We can't tell the life story, but we can tell you that one tiny piece of his work traveled down and finished up in America. Now, nobody knew where it had gone to. And about seven years ago, it was handed to a specialist, a gentleman who has a very high reputation indeed in the world of magic. This man has spent seven years rebuilding the puppet you're about to see. The puppet on the trapeze is Antonio Diavolo, the man who rebuilt him, the craftsman from America, John Gorn. <laughs> Welcome, John. Welcome. Thank you. So this is Antonio Diavolo. Here is Antonio. And entirely original. All, all old. All old. And all this is old as well, the trapeze. Yes, originally from the theater in Paris. I, I didn't touch it, I'll tell you. I know his last performance was about 75 years yes, ago. Yes, that's right. Well, we are very honored to have him on this show. Now, as he goes on there, ladies and gentlemen, remember, what you're about to see has no are electric parts. Are you holding on? You're holding on, Antonio? Oh, good, right. <coughs> you're not worried about falling off? Oh, that, that's <laughs> very good. And uh, should you uh, perhaps give him a little impetus? Now, I'm going to start the bar for Antonio, but Antonio knows that once the bar starts, we can't touch it anymore. He has to keep it going himself. Okay. Here we go. So what does he do first? A few warm-ups. Just loosening up the muscles? Yes, just to get oiled up. Yes. Oh, that's good. Very good, Antonio. Very good. I love the little acknowledgement of the applause yes. with the head. That's nice. What does he do next? He's going to do a classic series of uh, acrobatic tricks. Uh, on the bar itself here. The straight arm lift? Yes. Not many humans can do that. <laughs> oh, his toes are stuck. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Look at 
the strength in those shoulders. Yeah, look at that for a lift. Oh, what a balance. What a guy. <laughs> Whoop. Good. Very Great good, Anthony. Very good. I like that. Now Antonio will attempt his hardest feat. What's that? A handstand. A handstand? There's no safety net. <laughs> oh, he's up. Oh. He's up. You bend his legs. I prefer him straight. Straighten your legs. <laughs> and the other one. <laughs> there we are. Ladies and gentlemen, Antonio Diablo. Gymnast extraordinaire. The bar stopped on. Antonio, you have to start it yourself. No. Yeah. No. You're gonna have to try harder than that, okay? Once more. <coughs> That's it. That's it. That's... <laughs> that is extraordinary. Very good, Antonio. Very good. Very good. He likes applause. He does like the clock, I've noticed that. Now, his last series, he's been rehearsing all week, and this is very special to him. Careful, Antonio. Careful now. Oh, a knee hole. Oh, my. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's quite a trick, the last yeah. one. Yeah. Well, I think he must be getting tired by now, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, that's enough, Antonio. Okay, that's one. That's two. Time to come off. Come off, son. And Here off we he go. Comes. Ladies and gentlemen, incredible craftsmanship of Robert Houdin, recreated by John Gore and Antonio Diallo. Next guest comes from America and, according to the New York Times, is the world's best ventriloquist. We shall find out as I introduce to you the talent of Ron Lucas. Key for two. Isn't that a great piece of music for a ventriloquist? Yeah? Yeah. Um, lady, lady, this is a kazoo. I thought I'd join them. La ladies and gentlemen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what Paul said was very nice. I, uh, uh, I'm not the world's best ventriloquist, however. I, I consider myself the best in my price range. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm certainly the best you're going to see on this Christmas special. Before I get started... <laughs> Before I get started... Did you hit me? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Where are you? Down here, turkey. <laughs> the microphone? That's Mr. Microphone to you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ron. I'm a ventriloquist. You sure you're not the other guy? No, no, no. That's, that's the dummy in the trunk. Check again. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you're a little upset because I hit you with the kazoo. <laughs> I think you broke my nose. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, you don't have a nose. I did before you hit me. Yeah. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, what are you doing? I'm making a little adjustment. That's my neck. Can I touch you here? Do you know what that is? No, forget it. I, uh... <laughs> I need you a little higher. Can you help me out? Hey, no, no, what are you doing? No, 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 it's too high, it's too high. Take it down, take it down. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You animal. <laughs> I am, um, I'm trying to do a show here, okay? Are you gonna say you're sorry? We can deal with this later, all right. You wanna sound good, don't you? Is that a threat? 
Go ahead and talk. I beg your pardon? Talk. Hello? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Testing. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Are you sorry? Yes. <laughs> I can't hear you. Yes. I can't hear you. Uh-huh. That's not what I said. I changed it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um. I don't forgive you. What do you mean you don't forgive me? I have an act I'm supposed to do. What do you want from me, a Christmas present? Huh? Take the balloon out of your pocket. How do you know I have a balloon in my pocket? If you know it, I know it. Okay, all right. All right, all right. <laughs> you want the balloon? Look, you want me to blow it up? Uh -huh. Then you won't bug me anymore? It's a deal. Why don't you look the other way? Okay, face the audience. You do something else while I blow up the balloon. Okay, it's a deal. While he does that, I'm gonna sing a song. <laughs> You're gonna what? Sing a song. While I blow up a balloon? Yeah, at the same time. That can't be done. I can do it. <laughs> you don't seem to understand. Under listen, listen to me for just a second. <laughs> How do you do that? I'm a honky. Okay, all right. All right. <laughs> it's gonna work. I'll sing a song and you do something. Whatever. Well, I'll blow it up, you sing. Go ahead. All right. This better work. Trust me. <laughs> what? Trust me. Okay, okay. <clears throat> You want this? No, let it go. Okay, you do forgive me. I do. All right, because right now I must have a character suffocating in the trunk. No, let me out of here right now. Let me out. <laughs> I don't even know what this is. Uh, tonight, what I intended to do was a demonstration of a, uh, an interview of a normal American teenager, and this is what the BBC provided for me. Okay. Now, this is going to be an interview. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess we all remember how awkward our teen years were. <laughs> Hi. Hi. What's your name? Uh, my name is Scorch. And, and you are a typical American teenager? Actually. I'm a foreign exchange student. <laughs> right, okay, excuse me, I have to clear my nose. <laughs> you can breathe fire? Well, I'm not an adult yet, I'm only 13. <laughs> That's amazing, you can do that at 13 years. 1300 years. <laughs> Okay. That lady is very cute. Hello. Woo. Is this how you pick up women? I don't know. I don't have very good dating skills. You want to try? Uh huh. Usually you can introduce yourself to a woman. Oh. How's this? Here's my line. Hi. <laughs> Excuse me, just a second. This, this isn't exactly what I have in mind. How about if I am Thresher? Okay, I want to do my impression of a Japanese monster movie. <laughs> no, no, no I, I really don't think this is going to work. La la ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Turkey, who's the gargoyle sitting on your knee? What did you call me? I didn't call you anything. The microphone... Um, say hello to Scorch. Say hello to Scorch. Have you been missing your medication, sir? No, 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 no. <laughs> Are you working part-time as a lab animal? No, no, I'm not, no. Uh, uh, you say hello to the microphone, give it a shot. Hello. Hello. 
try it again. Hello? Hello? Is there an echo in here? Do you want an echo? No, we don't need an echo right now. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. Line, 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 a, 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 a. Scort, scort, scort. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> Oh, oh, get, 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 lean, the a hold, hold. Okay, okay, excuse me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. What is going on? The microphone is angry because I accidentally hit it with a little kazoo. <laughs> I think you broke its nose. It doesn't have a nose. Maybe it did before you hit it. <laughs> Do you know what else he touched? No, what? No, excuse me. <laughs> Listen, listen, listen. This, this, this isn't quite going exactly the way I want it to. Um, in fact, we don't really have an ending now because I forgot where I am on the show. Why don't you do the thing that's a row, row, row test? What's that? <laughs> no, 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 not, not the row, row, row test. Yeah. <laughs> What's a row, row, row test? I, a uh, ventriloquist a uh, hundred years ago in Europe said he could do both parts of Row, Row, Row Your Boat, but that's a legend. Nobody's ever tried it. I don't think I can do it that fast. Go ahead and try. Yeah, we can do it. We don't have any music. <laughs> do you know what's going to happen if it doesn't work? <laughs> Ow. You hit a stagehand. I think you broke my nose. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> this isn't going to work. Hang on. Ken, Uncle Ken, would you please play something that sounds like row, row, row your boat? Are you ready? I'm not going to do this. Yes, you are. How would you like to, need to breathe in your face? <laughs> you think you're making me talk, do you not? I am making you talk. Then why the hell are you arguing with yourself? <laughs> on a count of four. Oh, you're gonna do this? Yeah, we're gonna do it. Are you ready on a count of four? Come on. One, one, two, three, four. Row, row, row your boat. Row, gently row down the row the stream. Your boat. Merrily, gently, merrily down the merrily stream. Merrily, merrily life, merrily is but merrily a dream. Merrily life, row is but row a dream. Row your boat, row gently, row down the row the stream. Your boat. Merrily, gently, merrily down the merrily stream. Merrily, merrily life, merrily is but merrily a dream. Merrily life is but a dream. You're probably sitting there wondering what the Dickens I'm dressed like this for. Well, Dickens was not only a great writer, he was a pretty good magician as well. And so what we thought we'd like to do is a tribute to the great man. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Come follow me. And as I take a walk into the streets of Victorian England, well, you'll meet the kind of characters that Dickens would write about. Now, of course, there would be people like this who sold flowers, some people sold other things. Thank you, my dear. And there would be public houses where gentlemen could sit and imbibe and tell each other wondrous stories. Dickens would write down these characters and put them into novels like Christmas Carol. You're a character from there, what's your name? Tiny Tim. Did you know, Tiny Tim, that at the time that Dickens was writing his novels, um, I was a famous magician called Robert Houdin. Did you know that? No. No. Well, you see, Robert Houdin could do magical things. I mean, you walk very heavy. He could make boys lighter than air, and I will show you. First of all, we need a little platform for you to stand on. So if you just climb onto that end, which you should be able to do, I think, and if you just, if we make it like that, that's a good solid platform. Whoops. I'll help you. There we are. Now, can you get up onto the next stool? This is the hard one for you, isn't it? Oh, ho, ho. hey, that was good. Now we just one foot towards this end, and Tiny Tim, just just balance yourself there a second. Can you just pass that to me, please? And we'll make him even more secure. And then you support this as I put that out there. You might be better off with that actually under your elbow. Now 
steady balance, steady balance, because I'm going to do the same thing on this side with my stick. If you balance that on the stool, like that, and if you could balance on there. Good. Happy now? Happy? Yeah. Then I will hold this one, Debbie will hold the other one, and you relax. Very good, Tiny Tim, that was very good. And look, here's a coach arriving. Hello! Oh, the horse is beautiful. Oh, what a beautiful coach. Would you like to have a look inside? Yes, please. You would? All right. I'll open the door. You jump up. There we go. That's it, my dear. I can just... Ooh, I'm too, too fat. I can't get in. Have a look out the front. There we are. Nobody inside. Nobody out the front. Oh, well. Tell you what to do. Just make sure the back door's closed for me, will you? Thank you. And now, how would you like to take a trip into one? Well, a very magical trip. Yeah, let's do it. Well, what the coachman's done is chopped the wheels and the horses are now loose so they can go. Good. And the postillion and I will send you on a special journey. A different kind of journey into your own imagination. One. No one can sneak in the back. But look on the top, and the people appearing, and what's inside here. Oh, look, people everywhere. Who are they? They must be the, the Cratchits or someone, I think. Just, just come out Oh, and 
there's Mr. Cratchit and there's Mrs. Cratchit. And on top, look, they're the spirits of Christmas. <laughs> no, they think they're friendly ghosts today. So that means if you're the Cratchits and the ghosts are on the top, and he's Tiny Tim, there's somebody missing. Mr. Scrooge! Mr. Scrooge! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all right, look, he's in a good mood. Yeah. <laughs> on behalf of all the people who are assembled here, I would merely like to mention, if I may... You may! Hmm? <laughs> Delightful child. <laughs> that our unanimous attitude is one of lasting gratitude right, right. for what our friend has done for us today. And therefore I would simply like to say... <laughs> 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 Ever said to me. It makes a couple And if I had a flag, I'd hang my flag out to add this old to final victory touch. But since I left my flag at home, I simply have to say. Magic from Paul Daniels next Saturday at 7.25. Minute on BBC One, we join the night shift for the final episode of Casualty.